All right, welcome back. Uh, hopefully you've watched our first video uh, explaining our itineraries in the American Southwest for May of 2024. I'm Zach Van Austin, the founder and director of Dinosaur Trips. And of course, once again, we're joined by Dr. Brian Curtis of Fossil Crates. Uh, and of course, he will be our paleo expert for these two trips. So as I said, we've done uh, Route 66 million years ago, our look across Arizona and California, which will go from May 2nd to 10th. Uh, now we're gonna go piece by piece through our next trip, our Utah and Colorado experience, Red Rocks and Raptors, May 13th to 20th, starting in Salt Lake City, finishing in Denver, Colorado, and hitting up uh, some of the great sites in paleo history, really, along the way. This is, uh, this is, this is dense. This is a lot. We are, we are seeing specimens by the ton here. Uh, you're excited about, about just how much we've packed into these, uh, into this eight-day trip. I, this one is another mind-blowing experience, and I always tell folks, if you only have one part of the world you can go check out museums in, go to Salt Lake City if you like dinosaurs. It is the mecca of dinosaur museums, and Utah expands outward into just incredible experiences that we're going to touch. On our way to Colorado, which is a continuation of Utah's beautiful geology, it's amazing. So whereas in the Southwest, you have these beautiful mesas and, and dry or flat arid lands now we'll be looking at the rockies the big mountains the the huge elevation changes and what that's done is brought dinosaur layers up from the bottom and allowed folks to find them much easier now we're, we're i mean the landscapes alone like from arizona california and these gorgeous desert landscapes and obviously los angeles and the ocean uh but then with utah and colorado which i'm really excited about getting into the rocky mountains uh it's just like the feast for the eyes across these two trips alone is one thing. That's before we get into the food we're going to be eating, the drinks we're going to be having, the the company that we're keeping, uh, the hikes, the outdoor adventure. And then, of course, what we're about to dive into with you right now, uh, the specimens, the paleontology of it all, the museums. So we're, which is the first one that we're at? Yeah, we're starting with the uh, Mountain America Museum of Ancient Life in Salt oh, Lake City. Okay. That is the largest museum in the world with casts. Uh, a museum in China bought like an extra six casts to try to make themselves number one. But this is, you will not find a larger or a sheer larger number of casts in any museum in the U.S. It is mind blowing. When I was, I was actually a grad student in Utah when this museum was being constructed and hung out in the, in the early days. So I'll have some stories of that have not been told about things that were that either why things are or what they could have been. Right. But let's start off with the access we're going to have here. So Rick Hunter is the paleontologist at the museum. And Rick is the, you know, if you look at paleontol field paleontologist, it's Rick. He's, he's a great, great guy. And we're going to go on the other side of the aquarium. So lots of museums have their prep lab visible. They'll put big glass and um, you get to watch people prepare. Well, in our case, we're going to go on the other side of the glass. We're going to meet the preparators. We're going to go into uh, the room where I'm currently working with a team of paleontologists describing this gorgeous sauropod called a barosaurus it has a ridiculously long neck beautifully long tail a big body but what's in, what y'all get to get to do is touch this is this is the most complete this has been an enigmatic animal and this animal is our rosetta stone that's why there's so many people working on it together and you get to go see it up close and personal you'll hear about rick his adventures in the field digging these things out of the ground and then we're going to go into the museum. And I, I, if the Grand Canyon, I can't get words for, I struggle with words at this museum because it does such a phenomenal job with before the dinosaurs. Right. And then the dinosaurs themselves, they have some of the best original material and they put it on display. They have incredible ceratosaurus. There's no finer ceratosaurus in juvenile. And you're going to see it. You're going to get to put your face right up against the glass. Uh, we have my personal animal that I study the most, Supersaurus. The hollow type is on display. Now, I might ask Rick if we can go on the other side and pose with it. But we may very well get to do that. I think I think we will. And that is incredible to see 
all of this. And then you go into the Cretaceous where there's two T-Rexes staring off into, and, and the marine reptile room is incredible. I mean, the superlatives, and you go into the mammals. Oh my goodness, I get so excited about this museum. Every single time I go to Utah, which is at least four times a year, I go and just tourist out. I don't let them know I'm there. I just wander through and take it in. And I see something new every time. Oh man, no, I'm excited for this one. Um, we're in Salt Lake City. There's so much of this one museum that we've made the conscious decision, like that's the one thing we're doing all day on our second day. Uh, people have free time to explore Salt Lake City. I know you're going to have plenty of recommendations of what to do in the city, the rest of it. But yeah, this is really kind of, this is our kickoff in a big epic way for this trip. And and I can't wait to get into that museum. Uh, we're following up with some real wildlife the next day uh, as we head to Great Salt Lake and Antelope Island. So we're for me, I'm really excited. We're going to see some buffalo herds of like 500 plus animals, um, you know, and we'll get to start to talk in context of just like when you see a herd of buffalo that size, you start thinking about be it the Ceratopsians who were traveling in herds or what, and you start to contextualize all that. It's going to be really exciting. Uh, but then we hit it up with BYU's Museum of Paleontology that afternoon and evening. So take me through what, what we're, what's waiting uh -huh. for there. So that's my second home. So I study the animals there. Uh, my master's degree is from there. The museum itself is is one of the best bang for the buck, pound for pound, square inch casts. It's got some of the coolest, neatest, small front end. But we're going to go into the collections where not a lot of people get to go. Yeah. And we're going to get to see you're going to your your mind is going to be blown because this is a museum that specializes in studying sauropods. So the longest, tallest, heaviest animals. And you're going to get to see, you see you'll see you see some of them the day before, but you're going to get to go put your hands on animals I've dug out of the ground. We're going to go and hear the stories, meet the paleontologists that are making cool things happen today uh, all over Utah and parts of Colorado. And the, the material there, when we go upstairs, and you see the the jaws, you're going to get to see the holotype, keep coming back to holotypes, of Torvosaurus tanneri. You're going to get to see incredible Utah raptor material. This, this uh, big claws, huge jaws, massive teeth. We've got stegosaur, baby stegosaurus down below. The other side, we're going to just walk through and show you what is the result of years of digging, in, of of uh, really dense quarries. So I am so delighted. You will have a behind the scenes bone experience that you just don't ever get the opportunity to have. Well, I think it's going to be crazy. I mean, we got so much going on there between outside of the wildlife and then and then BYU. Like, and then it's one more night in Salt Lake City, uh, and then it's the Natural History Museum of Utah and the Utah Geological Survey. Day four, another day with a lot. A lot for us to uh, oh. you know, quite literally dig into. So, so, so the Natural History Museum in Utah is an incredibly cool museum. It has a. It has become iconic. It is. If you asked anyone what is the most iconic dinosaur exhibit right now uh, in the last 20 years, the Ceratopsian wall is going to be on everyone's top three list. Yeah, if, I've seen um, that. That looks awesome. It's one thing to see it in pictures. It's another thing to stand there in front of it and go, oh, my goodness. It is amazing. That's yeah, a work of art. Oh, it, it is so beautiful. And it's done in a way that that's evolutionarily correct in terms of how they're all put together. But you also have this beautiful barosaurus that's stuck in this, this miasma, this quicksand, if you will, and at Cleveland Lloyd Dinosaur Quarry. Because they have a barosaurus as well. You'll see one the day before. You'll see one the next day. And they have all these allosaurus attacking it. And they're recreating a site called the Cleveland Lloyd Dinosaur Quarry, which itself is a neat place to visit if you're really a hardcore paleo person. But the, the museum has done an incredibly great job of conveying what it was like. And it'll really challenge your thoughts and assumptions about uh, or dinosaur. What, what happened there? Right. I wouldn't want to get into you know it it's exciting I can't wait but they also have lithronax oh yeah I forgot to mention at BYU we're gonna see the holotype of teratophonius uh the monstrous murder lizard which is a t-rex cousin from southern Utah and then you're gonna go see the gore king lithronax and uh I don't I don't think we'll get access behind the scenes I'm trying uh but we'll see but I can tell you that 
the museum itself is so chock-a-block full of incredibly cool specimens on display. They've done an incredible job. And their mammal hall is amazing. Plus, you'll see Dinosuchus, the terror croc. They've got a whole skeleton mounted of one. You'll see the sc old school skull at the Brigham Young Museum, but you'll see the new school skull there. It's incredible. I can't wait. I love that museum. And then you mentioned the geological survey. Yeah. So you talk about a double treat. First of all, it's not a place people get to see. We're going to go see the Utah Raptor block. Yeah. And the Utah Raptor block is an eight ton chunk of stone that's chock a block full of Utah Raptor. And we don't know if it was a nest, what happened. There's multiple, there's new dinosaurs in this block. And Jim Kirkland, Dr. Kirkland, that if you've watched paleo shows, you know his distinctive low booming voice. The man is a living legend and he is so nice. He was one of the kindest guys to me when I started my career in 94. And Jim is a personal friend. I look forward to seeing him. He will take us through the story of the block and your mind will be blown away at what you're, the access you're going to have there. It's just stunning. I'm so excited. Yeah, I think it's worth re-mentioning there. This isn't something anyone can get to see, uh, the Raptor block. So. It's not on display. It's in a shed, in a warehouse, in a parking lot outside the main building. We had the Mesozoic Terrestrial Ecosystem Conference in March of last year. And... I think every every one of the hundreds of attendees took the field trip over in groups of 12 or so to go look at the block. Some took three, four trips because you just don't get the opportunity to see it. it it's it's amazing. So I can't wait. I'm so excited. No, I've had that. I mean, underline and circled. I can't wait for that day. Uh, the next day, we're hitting the road, Dinosaur Diamond Highway. You don't get a lot of uh, highways named after dinosaurs, so we're going to be hitting that, uh, as well as Dinosaur National Monument. It's a 486-mile stretch. Um, we One of the main points on there, Vernal, um, which has a 40-foot pink dinosaur. Uh, get, you know, it's a little kitschy, but it's fun. I mean, I experienced this last summer in Drumheller, which is obviously where the Royal Tiro Museum is. But that whole town is a dinosaur town. Like, it has leaned into the theme. There you've got the, the biggest T-Rex statue on the face of the earth that you climb up to and look at the mouth. And, you know, that's, it, it, yeah, it's kitschy, but it's also culturally relevant and fun uh so we're going to be stopping there we'll be at the king tut and dinosaur cafe we're gonna do a little din dining there uh but then it's also off to the dinosaur national Monument, the morrison formation oh, uh, let, be fun. i have to talk about these two sorry to interrupt but no. i'm so excited with this you're part a of paleo it. expert interrupt me all the time <laughs> so first of all vernal with dina the pink dinosaur they have the concrete it's a neat dinosaur town but the museum there, uh, Dr. John Foster is the paleontologist, and we're going to get extraordinary access in that museum. We're going to go into the collections. Uh, you'll see a Brachiosaurus bone that was collected recently, one of two, and of this element. It's incredible. You're going to see a Haplocanthosaurus, which is a kind of sauropod dinosaur, and it is the most complete representative of it. It's it, The publication should come out next year. It is unbelievable, and we're going to get access to their collections. And John Foster is an incredible uh, wealth of knowledge on the paleo of this of of Utah, Colorado. The man is is a legend. He's written multiple dinosaur books, Jurassic West. So he is there. He's currently been studying insects and leaves. So you're going to get to see things that you don't even think about the ecosystem that was around them. He's turned his attention to those. And then we're going to go to, if the Ceratopsian wall is spiritual, this is next level. This is going to heaven for a paleontologist. The Dinosaur National Monument, the quarry, the Carnegie Quarry, it is where some of the most iconic dinosaur mounts were blown out of the ground with dynamite at times. The, the quarry wall is full of bones. The museum, the holotype of Abetosaurus, uh, we should be able to go back into the collections there and see the holotype of one of the coolest sauropod dinosaurs you, you haven't heard of. And yet it made tremendous uh, scientific splash when it was discovered because it helped unlock a lot of mysteries. Plus, uh, Rebecca Hunt Foster is one of the most 
friendliest, nicest paleontologist. She's wonderful. And she's excited to hang out and share stories of being the park paleontologist. Yeah, uh, I'm just excited. The quarry is amazing. It is a place that every dinosaur paleontologist makes the, at some point in their life, they make the trek to go and see this place. I can't wait. And then we got the Utah field. It's a, this, this is a mouthful of a title. The Utah Fieldhouse of Natural History State Park. That's the one I talked about with the Haplocanthosaurus okay, before this one. one. I don't know. Yeah, the, the name is the longest name as far as I'm aware of any institute. <laughs> right. As they keep going through different governmental ownerships, they keep getting names tagged onto it. Uh, but it is, they have a mounted Diplodocus, so you get to see a Diplodocus. Everyone's heard of the animal. Well, now you're going to see CM84, Diplodocus carnegii. And it's from the Dinosaur National Monument Quarry. And you're going to get to see it on display. And it's really cool. I can't wait. All right. Oof. Keeping the museums going here as we hit day six and get into uh, Denver Museum of Nature and Science. We're also going to do Glenwood Cavern's Adventure Park. Uh, so you want to do a hike, you want to do a roller coaster up in, up in the Rockies at this point. But the Denver Museum of Nature and Science, uh, I can't wait for this one. I mean, you just keep the hits keep coming. It's like a, a best of. So at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science, they have a collaboration with the Madagascar paleontologists. So the Malagasy peoples have some of the coolest dinosaurs and non-dinosaurs. If you watch Prehistoric Planet or you played the game Ark, you're familiar with Bilzy Bufo, the devil frog. This creature is the biggest, meanest frog that ever lived. It ate dinosaurs, or at least baby dinosaurs. Um, they've also found crazy beasts, a dolotherium, this incredibly bizarre mammal. And they found pretty much most of the skeleton, which is extremely rare. But then you have the dinosaurs. You have Ma you have Majungasaurus, which is the animal that you see right here, there, and a scaled skull there. I'm looking at Majungasaurus, studying it right now. So Majungasaurus, that's a cast. But it's a 3D printed cast of the laser scans. And Dr. David Krauss, if we're lucky, we'll get the opportunity to see him, talk to him about his experience in Madagascar, where he's been leading expeditions since 1993. And he's the founder of the Ankizi.org, which means children in the Malagasy. And the Madagascar, at the income, the median income is less than $300 a year. So think about that. Uh, less than you know, a dollar a day and he has started a foundation he started way back in the 90s where he runs schools that provide education that provide health and knowledge and in exchange they keep the fossils safe they keep the, they leave the sites alone and so it's a really great partnership people have gone to college that have come from there and have become paleontologists so if Dave's there, we will get to have an incredible experience as he shows us off a tremendously cool number of Madagascar bones. No, that's a big one. I'm excited for that one for sure. Uh, and finally, our final day before departure, we're hitting up the Rocky Mountain Dinosaur Resource Center. Uh, another one that I'm extremely excited about. I've got a chance to chat with those guys a little bit. They're all the best. Uh, so excited to be headed in there. Yeah, the the, the short and sweet of that is that's my if if. That's my third home. If Arizona is my first, BYU is my second, that's my third. That museum, I would put it against any museum in, in the world. The artistry, the, the cast they have, the way it's set up, unbelievable. They have the best Mesozoic marine reptile display anywhere in the world, in my opinion. It is mind-blowingly cool. And we're going to get ultra cool backstage access to there. You're going to get to see how dinosaur casts are made. Uh, they're going to have us go upstairs, look at the 3D print lab. We're going to get to go in the shop where they do the welding and the molding and all of the heavy lifting. Now we will, and who knows what they'll be building. They're always building skeletons for museums. We'll have just missed their apatosaurus they built. They had a whole apatosaurus they're constructing, but that means that they're going to be putting something new up. So you never know what you're going to see there because they are the one of the premier providers of dinosaur skeletons to museums around the world. And I can't wait. That's so cool. And you get to see 
Pikes Peak right out the window. Well, we're going to be taking the Pike Peak Cog Railway, actually. Oh, my gosh. That's so, so cool. Yeah, no, it's, uh, that's, a, that's our final day. We're, we're finishing strong before our farewell dinner. Uh, so we'll also be hitting the railroad, um, you know, because you got it. We're going, to, we're going across the American Wild West. You got to hit yeah. the railroad at some point. Put it. Pikes Peak. Uh, tell me a little bit about Pikes Peak, because uh, people are really excited that, that that's a piece of this equation. So if you've never been, it's, it's, it's hard to comprehend the everything out in the southwest i guess i run out of superlatives and i love to talk and i like words but <laughs> it is one of the most fun highways to drive it's why they used to do the road race up it. and i guess they still do because you are driving at, at seven eight nine ten thousand altitude ten thousand feet and you're looking over the edge and there's no guardrail if yeah. you go off the edge you die so there is an extra level of terror except i drive that mazda miata and i love just now I'm, I keep the speed limits, but I maintain them through every curve. <laughs> so the 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 views, you're at the top of the world. They are superlative views, and then the cable car to go up the side of that to go see to the top to stand there to look around. It is one of those humbling experiences. I've never been to Everest, but I, I, this is probably the closest I'll get to mountain climbing because I'm actually afraid of heights. So even I love to drive, but when I get out and look, I'm like, yeah, that's okay. I'll stay back here. <laughs> But it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, anytime you get to go on the old time railroad trains, um, wonderful experience as well. Absolutely cool. The sounds, the smells, the sights. You get to experience how the dinosaurs that were collected uh, were put on train cars and then taken back to New Haven, Connecticut for Yale University, New York City for the American Museum, Chicago. They all had railroad cars and tracks that went right into their collections. So the train cars could stop and unload them. Uh, Andrew Carnegie, having all you know, lots and lots of money, had beautiful cars that he would just dump the you know, go to Dinosaur National Monument, collect me all these dinosaurs, put them on a train, take them back to the back to Pittsburgh. So we're gonna get to see the whole ex all of Paleo in some capacity, historic and current, by virtue of of these two trips and this trip alone. But well, what a great experience! And thank you so much for putting this all together. Oh, no, I mean, I can't wait. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be unforget unforgettable. I think it's, you know, uh, once in a lifetime opportunity really to, for you to be leading on these adventures, getting us that incredible access. There's going to be surprises all along the way that we haven't even talked about. Uh, in this video, we barely talked about all the other non paleo experiences we'll be hitting. You can check out the itineraries for full details of those uh, before everybody flies out on day eight of this experience out of Denver and heads home. Um, with a lot of memories, uh, pro probably too many from, I mean, just the sheer number of fossils that we're going to see and experiences we're going to have across eight days. We're packing a lot in there um, for sure. Now, not overpacking, I don't think. I think we've got uh, we got a good pace for the experience. You're not going to be overwhelmed, but you'll be highly whelmed, I guess would be the way to put it. If you are a photographer, bring mm -hmm. your wide angle lens and bring your zoom lens because the wildlife opportunities along the way i'm a hobby birder so there's lots of wildlife and places that we're going to get to see you've got a chance to add to your lifer list if you're an iNaturalist fan you've got uh, reptiles that we're going to get to work into this insects so if, if you like just experiencing nature the landscapes alone bring a tripod put it on f16 and then just click the button and you'll be taking home some beautiful photos as well. So there's there's so many cool things. You're right. And we're right at that saturation limit. Bring extra memory cards and extra batteries. I've learned the hard way. All Bring more than you think you'll need because yeah. every, every turn in some of these places is going to be, oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah, no, it's it's. I think just the, you know, just the geography of the place alone, just the landscapes of these two states alone are worth the price of admission. Forget everything else that we're doing after. And if you're, if you watch this video and you've watched our Route 66 million years ago video to get a sense of what we're doing and you're saying to yourself, I don't know which one to choose. You don't have to. These are combinable trips. They go back to back. Uh, we'll hook you up with accommodations in the day uh, in between to make sure that that transitions because Brian and I are on both of them. So we'll be hanging out and taking it through and you get a special rate as well if you want to combine these two trips. Make it a two week or I guess a nine plus eight is a 17 day expedition with us. Uh, explore the whole thing. I think that's really the obviously the best way to do it. Um, it's going to be incredible for us. 
since we're doing it back to back to get to, I, I can't believe all the museums and experiences we're packing into just over two weeks. But yeah, we'd love to have people join us for both because I think that narrative across the whole region is, is really going to be something. And, uh, you know, yes, we're going to hopefully be repeating these trips in the future, but who knows? I mean, there's so many places for us to explore with dinosaur trips. Um, and Brian's going to be coming along for a lot of future trips as well, but who knows when we'll be back in these two spots specifically. Uh, so make sure you get, get on these trips while you can, because as Brian has outlined across these two videos as we've gone through these itineraries, there's a lot of opportunity here that you're just not going to get on your own without you leading the way or at just other times because these things change, they evolve. Uh, so this is a great, this is a great moment to be heading into Colorado, Utah, as well as California and Arizona for these two trips. I can't wait. The countdown is on already. May, we're there. So excited. Cannot wait, me amigo. All right. People will be seeing you on those trips. Can't wait. We're starting it off in Phoenix on May 2nd. We'll see you then. Thanks so much, Brad. Thank you kindly. Adios.